So for the last few weeks, I've been experimenting more and more with ChatGPT and MidJourney for both content, content structure, and also creating images to use in various different places. So as part of this, I'm going to be opening up a free webinar very soon on how AI has changed the way in which I approach a lot of my workflow and how it's streamlining and increasing my productivity inside my business. If you want to know more about that, there will be a link in the description down below so you can sign up and find out more. Okay, so... I'm going to take you kind of behind the scenes on how I'm using this to actually create a landing page for that very webinar. So I've created the written content and all that kind of things, or at least some of it, but I want images to be using it. And obviously, I want these to be in keeping to what the content is all about, which is AI. And as you can see, I've got this little cute robot at the top, and I'm using that as a sort of hero section. But as we scroll down, I've got this area that I'm going to be using to kind of give you more information. But as you can see, it's blank at the moment. So I want something to use inside that section. So let's hop over into Midjourney and take a look at how I would approach things. Now, Midjourney can be very hit and miss until you start to understand some of the basics and how you can utilize it. This is not an exhaustive overview tutorial. This is just giving you a kind of behind the scenes. So as you probably know, if you haven't used Ms. Journey much yourself, everything starts off with Imagine. This is your kind of trigger to prompt the AI robot, the Mid Journey bot, to do something. And now we need to give it some information. So we could do a cute AI robot. And we could keep it really, really simple. So let's hit the enter on there and let's let that go ahead now and see what that comes back with. This is a very generic, open to a lot of interpretation. So we're going to kind of let this get a feel for where we're going to start our kind of like base level. And as you can see, it now already starts to go ahead and start creating. Now I am using a paid account with Midjourney, which is the $10 per month. This gives me some like 200 uh, sort of like renders every single month. But you can try this out for free with, I believe, around 25 examples. So you can at least get a feel for it before you spend any money if you want to spend any money at all. And you can see after a few moments, there we go. With a simple prompt like that, we now have four different versions of a cute AI looking robot. And in all honesty, these are pretty awesome looking. So once we kind of have a starting point, we might say, actually, I really like the look of this second one. We now have these options underneath. The U is to upscale. The number is which number of the images is it going to actually affect. So if we want to upscale the second one, we do U2. And as you can see, Bono will now jump in here and start redrawing this for us while singing songs to us in his dulcet tones. I'm not a YouTube fan, but I couldn't help but make the joke. Now, you may be also thinking, well, what's the V1 to V4? Well, that gives us variations. With recent updates in Midjourney, this makes it a little bit more powerful. If we press on V2, that will open up and show us the remix prompt. And now we can go ahead and we can just let this go and remix it and give us four more variations, or we can start to expand on what we've given it inside that prompt. So we can say cute AI robot, and we can say Pixar style. We might want to have a shallow depth of field. We want cinematic lighting, and we want to use a macro lens just to kind of give us some more options. We can now hit submit, and that's now going to go off and give us some more variations based upon the version two, but adding in those extra prompt informations that we've given it now to kind of expand on what we're looking for. So as you can see, it's now going to take in that information and it's going to go through, use that as the basis of reference and start to add in and create and include this extra information like the shallow depth of field and so on to give us maybe a more detailed kind of approach to what we're looking for. So after a few moments, you can see both our upscale and our new variations have actually been drawn up for us. So we click on this one. You can see we now have a slightly higher quality version of this. We can open this in the browser and you can see it is a bigger version of the image. So we've got something we could actually start using. And you may find this gives you exactly what you want. You may find you have to go back and create some more revisions. So these variations are OK, but it's not, not exactly where I want it to be. So let's go ahead and do another imagine prompt. And we're going to drop in what I've been looking for, which is a smiling AI robot looking at a computer screen, a shallow depth of field, macro photography, macro lens, cinematic lighting, and Pixar style. And if we want to have a certain level of control over the aspect ratio of this, we don't want it necessarily to be square. We do have a couple of options, but not many are supported in the version 4 of Midjourney, so we are kind of limited to what we can do here. 
So I'm going to use the aspect ratio of two by three. And as you can see, all we need to do for that is to put dash dash AR space two colon three. So as you can see, we're starting to get some different variations inside here right now. And there we go. We now have a couple of cute robots looking at the screen and so on with a two by three aspect ratio. So they look pretty cool. I like the look of a couple of these, probably the third and fourth one's probably my best. And I would say probably the fourth one is the best out of all of them. So what we could do now is we could say we want to have a variation on that. So we'll do V4, but we'll change this to be three by two. So we can kind of have a different aspect ratio. And if we want to make changes to any of this, we could also do that. Let's submit on this. Let it go ahead now and create a variation or variations on that particular design. Now, the crazy thing is that this is where we can kind of trip up things like mid journey. You can see that where we've changed that aspect ratio, it's taken inspiration from that first image, the first variation, and it's created those four variations, but it's taken our two by three and stretched it out to be three by two, or whichever way around it actually works. So you do have to be wary of these kinds of things. So what we could do is we could go ahead and we can say instead of the remix, we can just simply go ahead, grab that prompt, copy it, and we'll do imagine. So it's not infallible. You do have to be a little bit more careful when you put in your prompts in to make sure that you don't get into some kind of weird distortions and some weird kind of effects with it. But this is part of the fun of working with a tool like Mid Journey. It's a lot of fun to play about with it and get some inspiration and check new ideas and things like that out there and see what it comes up with. You can get incredibly specific, but it's still going to have a creative aspect to what it is it's creating. But as you can see, after a few minutes, we've now got a couple of different iterations. And you can see, these are very, very different, but also incredibly good. So I really like the look of, well, pretty much all of these. I like the first one, definitely like the third one, uh, sorry, the fourth one. So I'm going to kind of push those because I think they may be quite good for the actual layout that I'm looking for. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and say upscale one and we'll upscale. Uh, let's go for four. And let those kind of go ahead and upscale. But as you can see now, I've kind of got the artwork that I, I want. And now we can go ahead once this is finished and we can use those and take those into a design and start using them as part of our overall design process. So after a few minutes, you can see we now have our two variations. If we click to open these up, we can open our browser and see the full size version of this. And if we right click and get some image information, we can see this is 1536 by 1024. So it's a decent size, but you may still need to upscale it if you want to use it in certain kind of scenarios. Let's close this down. And I quite like the look of this one. So I'm going to select this. We're going to open it in our browser and we're simply going to go ahead and save this. And if I need to upscale this to make it larger, if I need a bigger image, then I'll use a tool like Pixelmator Pro. So I can go ahead, I can browse for the image that I want, grab our little robot. So now you can see we have our little robot inside you. If I want to, I can go ahead, I can supersize this. So I can go to super resolution, and if I want, I can click on that. And this is now going to increase that resolution by four times. So if I needed a bigger version of this, then this is going to do a great job of it for me. So we can see if we zoom in a little bit, we've got the before and after. And as you can see, there really isn't a huge difference other than if we take a look at the details down here on the sort of like the cables and things on his chest, that's the before. And if we scroll over, you can see that's the after. That pixelation has gone. So if you need to upscale, you can do that using a tool like this. I'm sure there's going to be online tools that allow you to do a very similar job. So now that we've got that in place, we can hop over now into our page. We can go to the container that we want to edit. And what we can do now is we can go ahead and we can upload that image. So I'm going to browse. You can see I've got a couple of images that I've used testing things out. But let's go ahead and upload that file. We'll open that up. Give it some alt text. Always good for our SEO. Click on select. And now we have our little robot inside our design. So now I can go ahead and I can tweak my design however I want. But for argument's sake, let's just say I'm happy with the look of that. Let's go ahead and preview this. You can see there's before we have nothing. And there's our little AI robot. And if you switch the screen out a little bit, you can see there's our little robot in all his glory. But as you can see, this is a really cool way of being able to generate images. And you're not limited to creating little ca cartoon characters of robots and so on. You can create an abundance of things. As you can see, I've been playing around with quite a few different types of images. We've got these little kind of cartoon characters. We've got logo designs. 
we've got illustrations, we've got awesome looking illustrations, little cartoon characters, more sort of realistic CG type characters. You know, you can use it for whatever you want. You really can get super creative with tools like this. I mean, look at something like that. How cool is that bottle? If you wanted to kind of create a website mocking up a product of a whiskey bottle or a rum or brandy bottle, but you didn't have that off the, off the actual client yet, but you still wanted to submit some kind of content and you don't want to use those sort of stock images, well, generate something using a tool like Midjourney. For me, I think this is awesome. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Can you use it for everything? No, you can't. But it gives you a ton of inspiration and ways in which you can create more original looking artwork where you don't have to rely on those sort of stock image libraries that everybody else is using. But I pass the question over to you. Are you using a tool like Midjourney or ChatGPT or Dali or any of these kinds of tools? Let me know and let me know the kind of results you've been getting because I'd love to hear your feedback on this in the comment section. As always, my name is Paul C. All applicable links are in the description. This is the WP Tuts and I'll see you next time. Thank you.